Also with me is Ellen Strauss. She is a longtime friend of Durst's wife, Kathy, who mysteriously goes missing. And as I recall, Ellen, he, Durst, changed his story, I know, of three times. Three times about what happened the night she goes missing. And he also admitted on the jinx that he lied to the police. He had told everybody, well, I called her, spoke to her in New York, went out walking the dog, made it from a payphone. It was a really lousy night. And he didn't walk three miles to a payphone. And um, he lied about it. And he admitted he lied about it to the police. But why was it never prosecuted? Why was it never prosecuted? First of all, it was brought in New York originally. The, that was where the investigation started. Not in Westchester, where it mm -hmm. should have been. Mm -hmm. And the police in New York believed the doorman, and they believed the elevator operator, and they were incorrect. They were not listening to us back then. Three of her friends, Eleanor Schwank, Gilbert and Jamie and I, went to see them at the precinct on more than one occasion and begged them to go to Westchester. Ellen, where do you think Kathy's body is? I have no idea. I mean, there was talk about it being in the Pine Barrens. There was talk about it uh, being chopped up and gotten rid of. How would I know a thing like that? I mean, nobody knows but Bob Durst. And nobody even, knows. Nobody knows. And, you know, even if he gets convicted in, in California, he's never going to tell us where Kathy is. He's going to take that with him to the grave. What was his demeanor? What was his demeanor after his wife goes missing, other than giving away her possessions and renting the house, apartment out immediately? Well, you knew I went through his garbage. Yeah. And I found he was throwing away her, his, her stuff right away, maybe within a few weeks. I never saw him after she disappeared. I only met him once, and that was at her graduation party. Kathy uh, graduated, and she went on to medical school. I went on to law school, and we kept up with each other on the phone. We talked all the time. She used to call me all about his abusive behavior, and not just to her, but she had a friend, uh, Peter Schwartz, who was sitting on the floor after they were out partying one night, and uh, cross-legged. And Bob kicked him and broke his occipital bone around his eye and ended up settling out of court. And Kathy was very annoyed because, once again, she said Bob got away with it. What do you think Susan Berman knew? Susan Berman knew a lot. And I have here documents, which I think you may have seen on the, on the um, some of them on the uh, jinx, where I begged Westchester police to go out and take care of talking to her immediately. I have here in my possession a fax that I sent to Janine Pirro's office, and that was dated November 20th, the year 2000. November 20th, the year 2000, and I had phone conversations with the detectives, and they told me that they didn't want to, that the uh, prosecutor's office didn't want to cut any checks to go fly out to California. They didn't get interested in her until after she was dead. And Piro went on television, and she said, the general public, meaning me, uh, we, we didn't know how the police worked. They like to work from the periphery and go inward, where I said, go right to Susan. Do it now.